And the other thing you could send to the, if, if you're more advanced, you could go for the window manager and do a, uh, an alt F4 to close the, the window. And that always works. And you can always go to the menu, and it's always going to be the last item at the menu. And it's going to say people, quit. If you People quit. don't use KDE in a vacuum. They're using a system. They're using PC Linux. They're using Ubuntu. They're using, they're using a system. And so... Yeah, and I have. If I, Can you I give have, me an example where it's not consistent that it works out of the box, uh, or you have uh, different menus saying different things? I mean, well, sure I enough, if you if you add third-party applications uh, and you're starting to talk about things like Adobe and stuff, then I'm not even sure if you go to Windows and make your guarantee to have the exact same structure. So when when you start to go in outside the realm, the uh, outside the uh, the uh, what's it called? The Apple has this uh, instruction guides of uh, the user interface. Say, I think it's HIG or something. What, what? The, the the Apple interface guidelines and and yes, that's the GNOME, GNOME has, uh, has great interface guidelines too. Right, and and not everybody necessarily sticks with these, uh, but by default in, in KDE, it is actually consistent. So, so, in KDE uh, it is, but remember, we're not talking people in using KDE. As well. Yeah, we're but talking as well. It's pretty consistent. Well, well so I, yeah, sorry, you, you can check. You'll see that it's okay. pretty consistent. So I have I have screenshots from an older PC LOS, PC Linux, um, which which are not yeah they're not up to date. Last night I was looking at Mint a little bit, and I just I was going ahead typing in some notes. And I got to thinking, I was typing in them in in a word processor on my Mac, and I got to thinking, well, what about the lowest word processor on a Mac? Or the sort of, you know, it's almost barely above a little, I can't even call it a text editor because it doesn't work well for editing text. But there's text edit, and then there's pages, or you could use Microsoft Word, either way. And in that case, all of these things would be would be consistent. Then I opened up on a default install of Mint. We're not talking third-party apps that have been added. I mean, I, I realize they've been added by the Mint team, but I looked at gedit, and I looked at the, the writer from, is it LibreOffice? Is that even how it's pronounced, LibreOffice? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one has quit, one has exit. One has edit preferences, one has tools options, but they both have an edit menu and a tools. When I went to close without saving, one has close without saving, cancel and save. Yeah. The other one has different wording and different order, save, discard, cancel. One keeps its clipboard when you quit, one doesn't. They have different keyboard shortcuts for how to get to full screen and different ways of getting out of full screen. Now, some of this is going to be inevitable. You don't, you're never going to get complete. A lot of operators don't come with an office suite, and this is considered to be a bit peripheral to the core operating system. Uh, When you're talking about the office suite in this case, it's in some cases I'm pretty surprised. That, oh, you're talking about me, yeah. So if you're talking about PC Linux OS, it doesn't even come pre-installed. It doesn't come pre-installed. You you usually, at least in the previous version, you you have a button to basically if you want to install the uh, Office suite, you can go and get it. You can just click something and it gets it for you. Uh, but this is one of these examples where you have a cross-platform application. And it isn't actually integrated so well into the desktop environment. And the same goes for Windows, where you basically use Windows. Things are consistent, but you don't have Office with it. You will have some something that opens up. Like, do you know what in KDE what the the uh, default application for opening a uh, document will be? No. It's going to be KOffice. Uh, and in KDE, it's usually something like numeric, and you have these uh, other applications like. Uh, in some cases, you might even have the uh, what's it called, Abbey Word or something like that. That's based in GDK. So you're thinking about the the very bloated big applications uh, and expect them to be consistent, uh, and well, they're not even part of the core operating system. Well, what I'm looking for, and where I think, well, so I've I've been parts of usability studies, and I've I've looked at other ones, and if you have these environments mixed. It does lead to um, a lack of productivity. It leads to when you have save on the left, save on the right, people click on the wrong button. And it's user error. That's what it's called. But it's not. It's an error of the system. And I've looked at Now, I haven't looked at the newest PC Linux, but I've looked at it. And I see I have the screenshots here from, from a couple versions ago now, I think, mm-hmm. looking at its default 
programs. Just mm-hmm. install it straight, not get anything from any place else. Mm-hmm. It's default programs. And there's a mishmash of do you use exit, do you use quit, is the save on the left, is the save on the right. You're specific there's, about. Can you name some of these applications? Uh, well, let's see. I have, I don't have the names of them here. I just have their their file menus or what goes with that, so it's hard to say. Yeah, well, it's it's Looks, very vague because, I mean, I, I've used it before, and I, I don't think that's true what you're saying now. Well, and, but uh, it is. I mean, so... I mean that's I have screenshots after the show here. Yeah. I can go ahead. I will post um, yeah. It, it, yeah. screenshots. I will download. Now yeah. it'll be the newest PC Linux, which I haven't used, but I will download that, install it, and see what it does. Mm-hmm. I know with Mint, I just picked two essentially random applications because that's what I was using at the time. Yeah. This was a default installation, and even if you're saying, well, you, know, you installed something from the repository. That's still a problem. People go to the repository, they install, they're not does, given... Uh, a does Apple history. Mac have a repository in previous version, in older versions of Mac OS X? Could you go to a repository and get more applications for your Mac? The, there was there was third-party places, and there still are, things like download.com, uh-huh. where you that's can go... The web, the re- that's repositories the are great. Yeah, okay, okay. But you can, if you go to download.com or you go to the Apple Store... You can get you, malware. Excuse me? You can end up actually downloading something you don't actually actually want in your system. I mean, I, I saw some videos. You make some very nice videos on how to download applications and install them. And I think this is one of those areas where you can say uh, the Debian team was ahead of Apple and even ahead of those uh, uh, stores that you have on phones and even things to do with media. Uh, the notion of trying to centralize things, and I think that's a really nifty thing. Um, the fact that you can uh, use these repositories to get things that are not native to your to your environment, so outside of Qt and outside of uh, of GDK, and get applications that are being made by some independent developer whose project was probably audited by the Debian team and put in the repository, that's that's a plus really. That's that's a good thing. And I've I've remember my days using Windows for a while. And I used to use both platform. I think I think I was still using a little bit of Windows until two thousand and five, and so, until sometime in two thousand and five, I still had basically a partition that was supplied to me by my employer uh, before I wiped it basically. And and I I would see uh, lots of the lots of the most downloaded applications for Windows. Do you know which one they are? It's usually something to do with copyright infringements and things like that. Not necessarily. In some cases, it's just downloading files. <clears throat> in some cases, it's very much targeted at things like viruses and things like uh, trying to get music, So, which usually means you're looking for music and probably not Creative Commons. Uh, and these applications are developed using things like Eclipse. And I don't think they're even very well designed, because I think the purpose of these is to just reuse some code and enable people to connect their hosts and to exchange files. And these these things, if you actually look at them very closely, are very inconsistent with respect to the operating system. I, I've seen the ones that are based on Java and things like that. They're terribly inconsistent with the operating system. It's very heavy. It has to load all kinds of libraries that don't belong there. And that's on Windows. Now, I don't really know about Mac OS X, and I don't really think Mac OS X is going to allow you to use so many toolkits. I mean, Mac OS X barely supports X. You have to, like... Export. I, I'm not sure it's still the case, but in the past, if you want to install the game from OS 10, you'd have to like go and get X server and install this. It's it's a whole major mess. If you want to install the game on Windows, then you have to get GDK and you have to get this and that before it even works. And in Linux, all you have to do is just tick a box and it works, and it's going to pick up all the necessary toolkits, even if you're running KDE and don't have GDK by default. So so this is a very nice example of how Linux deals with the necessary frameworks and the missing and how it is usually very consistent, but at the same time it allows you to get past to... Uh, so if I use KDE, I can still get the applications that are very unique to GNOME, which I sometimes do, uh, for certain applications where I think the GNOME side is more rich than the Linux side. I could also use Wine to run a Windows application if I wish to, and that's going to just look like a Windows environment, and I might say, well, it's, it's consistent, but that's the same That's the same way actually it's going to work in Mac OS X. So if you run a virtualized machine, or if you run... I think they have, I think they have crossover for for Mac now. If you run the Windows applications on Mac OS X, it's still going to look very inconsistent, and it's going to have whatever you know buttons and accelerators you have in Windows, which would be inconsistent with your Mac environment. Michael, I, I think I think that 
So you can go ahead on a Mac and you can go out of your way to make it inconsistent. I can go out of my way and run and run Open Office in yeah. X. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh.